if you're forming your fruit before you even think about it, it's like doing good, all these little seeds, you know, it's like doing good, doing all the kinds of little natural, nice kindnesses and, and useful things, but not really with a lot of intelligence, or not with a lot of thought about why you're doing it. It's more out of obedience, this is the nice thing to do, but not necessarily out of this is part of God's plan. You know, the olive has a single seed. It's like this reminder there is one God that all this goodness comes from. All these little tiny seeds that are formed before the, you know, before the leaves are even come on is like, try, it's a good thing to do good. And it's a good thing to do good in any way, but it's not as reflective of a good. It's not really with that acknowledgement that this is part, I'm doing this, I'm trying to see how it fits in with God's design and plan. This is more like, oh, it's my thing to do. You know, someone just dropped a plan, so I'm just going to get it to another one. You know, it's just kind of things that we do that are not as, that maybe not as reflective. Maybe out of guilt. Or maybe out of guilt. Who knows? Right. But it's important at any stage to do good for any reason. And, and that Jesus wanted those fig trees to be producing fruit. And if we're not producing fruit, it's also another reminder of the way that, that Swedenborg kind of saw this. A little bit like Martha in that parable, you know, where she's so busy doing good, she really right. they couldn't, she really wasn't... Um, she didn't um, value Mary sitting at yeah. God's feet and just... You know, Mary was more like that reflective part, right? She, when she's sitting at Jesus' feet and, and appreciating what he's teaching, and Martha's serving, and she says, what? She gets kind of mad at Mary, right? Well, you kind of need both. You need both. You need all of it. Um, so the fig alone is not is, is good. It's not, you know, way over here on day seven. But it's good. But it, it's still good to produce. The, some of the best Bible passages is when they're, it's all together. There will be a, um, the vine, the olive, the fig. If they're all mentioned together in the passage, that really means everything's coming together. Because then you kind of love, your wisdom, and your use. But if it's just the love, <coughs> then you're going to So that's kind of like the fig tree. Now, um, I know we have just a couple more minutes. And there are so many different kinds of trees to get to. Um, what I might just mention is that um, I have to mention if you if you see the value in this, if this feels like something that makes sense to you, a lot of trees aren't mentioned in scripture, right? So you have to kind of for yourself try and think, well, what is this? And what is the use of it? And what is it? What is it accomplishing, and what might I learn? So, for example, um, orange. If you think of orange trees or apple trees, you might think about what do we know about orange trees? They they mostly need a warmer climate. If you think about where they grow the best. So, if you think about the warmth and being like God's love, it might have something to do with the usefulness or um, something about sharing God's love. It's juicy and it's sweet. So something along that line. Now the apple, um, I wanted to mention, I just have to get it in because of course, Johnny Appleseed, you know, planted the apples and uh, this, this might mean, might be more of something that's less, it's sweet, but it's crisp and it's, I'm trying to think of the different qualities of, a, of an apple. Flavorful. It's flavorful. It can be tangy. It can turn to vinegar. Apple juice can kind of turn to vinegary. Crunchy. Crunchy, right? So the the question is to you know is to open just to be open to thinking about well, what would that be like? Now one one idea I did see and I included a the the, the paragraph from William Worcester. He was a sweet fortune writer, he wrote this a long time ago, so I wanted to include that. And he was, he said, you know, a lot of these the trees aren't in the Bible, but I'm just trying to give my ideas about what they might mean. He said something about apples that maybe they're like 
social, uh, maybe like social manners or things that we teach um, that might be good. So I was thinking all the different seeds inside, you know, we might plant. Like I have, I have two little children, they're three and five, and so I'm always reminding them about please and thank you and things like that. And maybe each one of those seeds could be something like that. But, you know, you, you want to teach how it is to be nice, but you don't want to turn that into criticism the way it might turn into vinegar or something like that. So, you know, I mean, you just kind of have to stretch your mind and be open to thinking about what it might be if you kind of have it mm -hmm. around this way. You know, start. Right. 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 So that's there, too. Yes. And if you think about the seasons, you know, they, mean, they don't produce fruit all the time. Right. So we need our time to rest. Right. And to rejuvenate and to come back. Right. I'm really glad you mentioned that. Right. So the other thing about trees, one of the other things to consider is, are they evergreen? Do they need seasons, just like we have seasons of our lives for, for different ways of, of being and doing? You know, I often think too, just when you're out driving down the highway, where you see a whole grove of trees, mm -hmm. all kind of with their branches reaching out, kind of supportive of one another, mm -hmm. kind of representing a community of people cooperating because they are, you know, with their branches touching one another in many cases with their clothes. So giving, you know, so it's very representative of people in a community, but then you sometimes see, even going down to Purdy Prairie, there's a single tree all standing all by itself, nothing else around. But you could be, when you drive by, the birds are still in the tree, mm -hmm. and you can just see maybe animals, uh, you know, various small animals around the tree. So that kind of symbolizing, even though maybe we're not you know, even singly by ourselves, as a tree out in the field, all by itself, somewhat isolated, you know, you can still perform a wonderful uses, mm -hmm. even though you're just by yourself. Mm -hmm. We don't have to wait until we're in a community of people. Right. We can do it, we can just undertake ourselves to do something that's like a tree giving shelter to animals mm -hmm. or birds nesting in that one tree standing all by itself out in the field. I mean, it's kind of an interesting uh, exhibit, really, of our human experience. Another thing for fruit trees, yeah. they need to be pruned right. to produce the best fruit. That's right. And we all need to be pruned. Pruning. Oh. Pruning. <laughs> that you found something useful in it, and we will have one more uh, scheduled event in May. And I heard that the calendar is open here for the 11th. I'm hoping to reserve that as soon as I can. And uh, we're going to think about animals. So, so far we've been thinking about more of the intellectual life, the birds and the trees. We're going to be moving into the animals in the sixth day, and it's more of the emotions, we'll see. And, uh, Anyway, 